Envie de challenge Désir de défi Besoin de dépassement Intégrer une structure innovante Et rejoignez notre co-team Leader sur le marché du content analysis En open space L'innovation est votre moteur Et le challenge votre late motive Rejoignez les collaborateurs du groupe qui chaque jour Co-invente la plus belle des co-relations clients Le content moderator Est un expert du web 2.0.5 Il fait preuve d'objectivité subjective Et de maturité collective Vous devez disposer d'un très bon relationnel D'une certaine fermeté Et d'une réelle souplesse Avec les co-utilisateurs de la communauté Vos missions Co-piloting projet co Reporting chiffré en back office, front office, online, and offline. Tout simplement. Et c'est déjà beaucoup. Bullshit. Parce que co-worker, c'est co-sympa. J'ai été à l'université, euh, ensuite j'ai un peu voyagé, et puis je me suis arrêté euh, à Barcelone. J'ai commencé à trouver du boulot un peu à droite à gauche euh, avant d'arriver à Facebook. Je ne peux rien communiquer euh, en rapport sur la compagnie. Rien. Euh, ni comment ça fonctionne, ni nos conditions euh, de, de, de travail, ni du, ni du salaire, ni le contrat, ni euh, ce qui se passe, ni le contenu. Euh, rien. Donc euh, tout est à risque. Ça a l'air abstrait comme ça, mais je risque beaucoup et euh, ça, peut, ça, peut, ça peut gâcher ma vie. Et, euh, et, euh, enfin, ça paraît gros comme ça, comme si on était dans un film, mais on ne sait jamais. On ne sait jamais et, et euh, eux, ils ont les moyens de tout et moi de rien. Donc, euh, donc c'est pas, ouais, pas évident. Facebook a fait un partenariat avec, euh, avec une boîte d'outsourcing et celle-ci euh, euh, s'est mise en quête de, de rechercher euh, le nombre d'employés euh, voulus et désirés, de les traîner euh, avec les guidelines, bien sûr, de Facebook. Euh, mais c'était cette, cette entreprise qui gérait, qui gérait tout par rapport aux employés. Euh, J'étais content moderator, c'est-à-dire que j'analysais le content à savoir s'il est approprié ou non pour rester sur la plateforme. Euh, une journée type, euh, c'est euh, arriver à l'office, euh, monter à son étage, devoir laisser toutes ses affaires personnelles dans un casier, euh, prendre position sur un ordinateur qui n'est pas personnel, et euh, ensuite, euh, passer du temps à revoir les, les décisions qui ont été prises les jours précédents, car il y a toujours un contrôle aussi sur ces décisions-là. Et une fois que ça, ça a été fait, euh, recommencer à, à modérer du contenu euh, toute la journée. Quand on arrive, on pointe, et euh, d'ailleurs, on ne pointe pas avec un badge, on, on pointe avec euh, notre empreinte digitale. contenu par rapport euh, euh, qu'une personne effectue à Facebook, ça dépend, euh, ça dépend de son rythme, ça dépend aussi de combien de temps elle est, elle est là dans, dans, dans la compagnie, mais je dirais euh, d'une personne à l'autre, ça doit osciller entre euh, euh, 300 et 600, euh, 600 reviews par jour. Des meurtres, des suicides, euh, des viols, euh, des violences conjugales, euh, euh, du racisme, euh, de la discrimination, du bully, euh, tout. Tout ce, qui, tout, ce qui, tout ce qui va... Moi, le pire, je dirais... Euh... Hum... Ouais, je dirais peut-être les décapitations et euh, le viol de bébé. Ouais, ça, c'est peut-être euh, les choses les plus fortes. Si vous êtes encore un peu naïf, que vous avez une certaine innocence, s'il vous plaît, jamais quoi. N'y allez pas, euh, ne gâchez pas ça. <rire> Mais euh, voilà. Parce que oui, tu vas voir des choses que tu n'as pas envie de voir en fait. Donc ça, ça, ça sert à rien. Une fois que l'innocence, elle est, est, on ne la retrouve pas. Donc. Euh... quand même cet esprit euh, un petit peu start-up américaine donc euh, tout 
à fait, il y avait les sigles Facebook, il y avait toute une, toute une salle de jeu. On était un peu dans cet esprit-là. Il y avait un contraste entre ce côté, on fait partie de la communauté pour travailler pour Facebook, ces grands connecting people, alors que, bon, une fois, une fois lancé, les choses étaient quand même très, très cadrées. Finalement, une liberté qui n'en était pas. Oui, c'était quand même une grosse surprise venant d'une grosse multinationale comme ça. Ouais. Il y a des conditions qui sont particulières, comme euh, euh, d'avoir un temps limité pour aller aux toilettes, euh, d'avoir un temps très, très, très limité pour déjeuner. Euh, C'est 20 minutes pour déjeuner. Pour aller aux toilettes, c'est dans les cinq minutes de pause qui nous sont accordées chaque heure, qu'on ne peut pas regrouper. Mais euh, bon, je pense que les, le, le, la fonction de modérateur est, est nécessaire. Je pense vraiment qu'elle est nécessaire, notamment euh, par l'ampleur qu'a pris, qu pris Facebook. Euh, et si on veut continuer euh, euh, à promouvoir, se connecter les gens partout dans le monde, je pense qu'il faut... Il faut, revoir, euh, il faut revoir la manière dont, dont on traite les modérateurs et, euh, et peut-être un petit peu plus cadenasser, cadenasser, euh, euh, cadenasser les règles. Être euh, peut-être un petit peu moins sur les, intérêts, euh, sur les intérêts privés et puis penser plus, euh, plus à la communauté. My name is Chris, I'm from England originally and I lived a long time in Asia and then I came back to Ireland with my new wife and we needed to find work and this was the easiest job that I could find. The, the job title is Community Operations Analyst. It doesn't say anything about Facebook, it doesn't really explain the job. They tell you it's about analyzing trends and recognizing what's happening in the world and implementing standards and so forth. It sounds very exciting. But we're working in a Facebook building. We're using the Facebook systems. I have a Facebook ID. I have a documents for Facebook that I have to sign. It's You're working for Facebook, but there's a, a gap, I think, and it, it's just to protect Facebook legally, I think. Most of my work was related to uh, content moderation. So when I started and I was new and they didn't have work assigned for us because they were increasing the number of people. So I was just looking at pornography or m material content that people have reported as pornography. So mostly naked ladies. It was a very nice, my first month was a very pleasant month of work, but then you would see some disgusting animal sex or, or, or children or something occasionally. So it was a little bit of a shock. And then later, the priority for the UK team is hate speech, bullying, threats of violence, you know, nasty, nasty stuff. And I would spend six hours reading arguments between people or complaints about Muslims or black people or English people or French people. Just nasty, awful stuff all day. The terrible stuff is the small part. From 500 tickets, maybe only 50 or five in one night would be really bad. The majority is just boring, depressing, sad. You know, kids, especially Instagram, we would be looking at mostly young people just arguing, calling each other names and, and saying, oh, Julian's got a big bottom. Or, you know, Julian looks ugly today. Just stupid stuff. And you have to decide, well, are they talking to a kid? You can't talk like this to a kid, or you can say this to a kid. You can say this to an adult, but not a kid, etc. And it's not, I don't think it hurts so much. I don't think it's so harmful, but it, it becomes just depressing. Yeah, because you're just, you're always seeing the, the bad side of humanity. You're seeing the, 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 the low level, nasty, difficult lives that many people lead.
So when I started the job, I was, I was kind of excited. I'm, I'm saving the world. I'm here to protect the people who use Facebook from bad actors. This is the name we have, people whose actions are bad. So you would just review the content and think about the rules. And after some time, you notice maybe you're agreeing with the content or disagreeing and getting angry. And then after a little bit more time, you're responding more to something bad that you see. Oh God, not this again. Oh, I hate this guy. Why did people do this? And you start to, it's not immediately because you're ready, but over time, it starts to just, just slap, 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 slap. You start to feel the pain, I think. Oh, <laughs> for example, you know the terrorist group ISIS and they will execute people and make the video and put this online. And in a video game, you know, if, if I shoot you in the head, your head will just boom. And in real life, if, if you do that with a you know, machine gun, the, the bullet, it's always from this side, it, it comes in and the head kind of goes, but all of this side of the face, the skin, is still there and it it blows away and it blows back because of the, the, the tension and the body is just falling to the ground but what I remember is that the, 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 yeah the, the, the thing that you don't expect and when you see enough of that I think after a time yeah it's there I can see every detail and it, and it comes back, and it, it's 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 deep in my mind. It's it's buried in my head. Yeah, it's really really hard. I have several friends that I worked with before, who are now unable to work or not working, can't find a job. They're taking medication, anxiety medication. They're taking antidepressant medication. My doctor told me I'm depressed and I need to take um, SRI, SSRI, Prozac, because she thinks I'm depressed and I, I, I'm, I don't believe in these diseases. I don't, I don't want to take medicines, but I'm not doing very well either. You know, I've, I've had three jobs since I left Facebook. I can't keep a job. I get into arguments with people about nothing. So we need help. We need a professional person to spend some time with us and help us to understand what problems we have and what we can do. The NDA means I can't have this conversation. I, I can't talk to you. I, I can't talk to my wife about the work that I do or did. I'm not, you're not allowed to discuss any detail of anything related to Facebook's operations, or Facebook's secret information, or your your working conditions. It covers everything. It's it's a, a, a gagging order for life. It's a lifetime agreement. S somebody has to speak because we're hidden, we're silent. We are not allowed to have a voice because Facebook wants to protect Facebook. Facebook doesn't want to protect the people that may be harmed. And it was like a light in your head. You just go, wow, yeah, this is the truth. I should ask a lawyer if it's okay. Initially, I was contacted by Chris, who came to me and explained his work circumstances. It was very easy for me to do the research to see what he was complaining about and to understand and empathize with his position. Uh, it was also easy for me to understand his legal rights and how they were infringed by what has happened. And that, of course, will form the basis of the case against Facebook. From, through Chris, many more people have come forward, and uh, both male and female, 
And it's quite clear that a pattern emerged straight away of people who were hurt, people who were injured as a result of what happened to them in their workplace and the many hours they spent doing what they had to do, which unfortunately has led to their damage and will now lead to their vindication of their rights through the courts. It's clear to me that many of the people who moderate and worked as moderators are damaged by what they've seen, they're hurt by it, and they also are afraid to make steps to vindicate their own rights. The, the purpose of this case is to establish a safe harbour for these people, that they don't have to go up front, that they can, they can vindicate their rights by being within a group and allowing those people who have volunteered to be those lead plaintiffs to allow them to fight the case on behalf of all. If, if, if you look at the workers' rights within the, the moderator world, they are quite limited. However, the work itself is very demanding and, as will be shown, is quite damaging at times to certain individuals. I think in the computer business and in many other multinational businesses, the idea of denying work uh, rights to workers is uh, very prevalent and that, you know, in, in this particular instance, it's quite clear that uh, Facebook are seeking to remove themselves from the equation. It's quite clear that those people who do the work do not survive long in the job and therefore no rights accrue to them because A, they're on agency work and B, they're not there long enough to claim rights. However, one has to understand that we're talking about people. We're talking about people who want to get on with their lives. And in reality, uh, it, for me, the, the use of agency agreements is purely there to, for Facebooks to distance themselves, as indeed many multinationals are doing, to try and deny ordinary people their rights as citizens to partake in long-term security of employment. And uh, it's an unfortunate development in, in, the, in our world, but that's, that's what we have to deal with, and uh, we are dealing with that. I think if you listen to politicians, nobody is aware of what's being done, what's happening because politicians are all complaining about fake news and election integrity and the spread of extremism, etc. There's this problem that they see and they just shout, we want a solution. But they don't know anything about the work. They're not talking about, you know, how can we do this? They're just pointing to the social media companies and saying, this is your fault. But they're not, they're not engaged with well, how do you do this? Because to write the rules is really, really difficult. To create a system that enables us to protect you, your children, somebody's bullying your kid, I have to deal with that. Somebody is spreading hateful ideology, I have to deal with it. So instead of shouting about Facebook, why, why are the politicians representing the public not working with me to say, well, how can we enable you to, to help people. I, I try to think about this as if I'm Mark Zuckerberg. How do you solve this problem? And it's not his problem. His problem is that he has to make money for his shareholders. It's a legal requirement in America. He has to make the maximum profit. So he's not interested in content moderation unless it makes more money. And I never heard anybody talk about how Facebook makes more money because of this.
Waouh, le cliffhanger de dingue Passe la télécommande, j'en peux plus. Je vous entends déjà piaffé d'impatience. C'est quand la suite Et l'épisode suivant, c'est pour bientôt Et là, j'ai envie de vous répondre. Hop, 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 hop. Calmos. On respire un grand coup. On prend son mal en patience. Et on se mate l'épisode final. À la cool. À très vite donc. Pour le season final. Le retour. De la vengeance. De la rébellion. Qui contre-attaque. D'ici là, cliquez bien. Bullshit. Vivement la suite.